Hello everyone and welcome to another Win911 weekly webinar. Today we're going to be talking about Wonderware InTouch and best practices for this. So a quick overview of Win911 and the fact that it's a modular system. It's consisting of multiple runtimes. Uh, they're responsible for their specific tasks. So you can group these modules into three main categories. You have your data source, which is responsible for connecting to the various SCADA. And then today we're going to be talking about that in-touch version, obviously. Now, after the data source, we uh, send that information onto the dispatcher, also the reporting module. It passes the information to the dispatcher, which is responsible for dispatching those alarms to the appropriate notifier. Notifiers are then responsible for sending those notifications to operators. So whichever one you're using there, voice, email, SMS, or the mobile app, uh, this is kind of the flow from your SCADA to the data source, to the dispatcher, to notifiers. Okay, to talk about the Win911 connectivity. Uh, so the InTouch data source utilizes a combination of the Wonderware Alarm Toolkit and the Wonderware Suite Link, and that's used to integrate into your InTouch application. So the Alarm Toolkit allows us to tie directly into the Wonderware Distributed Alarm System through that Alarm Manager and it gives us access to alarms generated in your InTouch applications. <clears throat> SuiteLink is used to acknowledge the alarms, uh, also used to update the heartbeats and retrieve data values for reports that you might request or value-based watchdogs. Uh, both the Alarm Toolkit and SuiteLink support network connections to InTouch, which provide WinNem1 the ability to connect to the local window maker application and your remote applications, and also applications running in a terminal service or remote desktop environment. Uh, the main thing to take away here is that we are tying directly into the alarm system with a toolkit, and we connect to the alarm manager.exe. Now, one important note here is that the in-touch runtime, that's from Win911 side, and your Wonderware uh, alarm manager from in-touch, those must run in the same session. Uh, so the same session, what does that mean? Uh, that's when you uh, take a look at the, ta the tasks running in your task manager. You can show what session ID they're running in. And uh, session 0, session 1, session 2. And we want to be running in the same one. So for example, if you were to open up an application while you are using remote desktop, RDP, uh, usually when you launch something from that connection type, it'll start in session 2. Not always, but most of the time. <clears throat> As opposed to opening up the application uh, directly on the machine physically in front of you, would be in session one. <clears throat> and then if the system was to automatically start something by itself, a scheduled task or a, a logged on user, something like that, that would usually be in session zero. Again, those can all be uh, manually changed and some other extenuating circumstances come into play. The main thing to take away is our runtime and alarm manager have to be running in the same session. Okay, so for remote connections, uh, Win911 can connect to remote InTouch applications. Uh, if you'd like to run it on a separate server from InTouch, you just need to install InTouch on the same system where Win911 is. Um, it does not have to be running or activated with a license. Uh, when you install InTouch, it just places those Wonderware components on the system that we need to connect to your remote uh, window viewer applications. So the files have to be there. It does not have to be licensed, though. <coughs> uh, we can also connect to multiple InTouch applications from a single Win911 system. It does not require um, the license again. However, from us, from the Win911 side, uh, it does require another node license to be purchased. So one license for your main instance, another node license for a separate uh, InTouch application. And just to let you know, it, uh, this, this traffic, network traffic, it's traveling through SuiteLink, which uses port uh, 5413, and that is TCP. So when running Window Viewer on an RDS or a TS server, terminal server, uh, each Window Viewer instance launched in that RDP session generates its own set of alarms. 
Okay, so for example, when running two instances of the same in-touch application in two separate RDP sessions, that's remote desktop, acting an alarm in one instance will not pass that through to the other instance. Now because of this, uh, it's recommended to run a quote-unquote master copy of your in-touch application in the console session of Windows. Okay. Uh, you would then configure the alarm summary control in, uh, in Window Maker, and it would be configured to look back at that centralized location of alarms. So all of the other secondary connections that are started, the multiple alarm managers that are started from another person, you know, remoting in and, and opening Window Viewer, all those would be looking at your main master copy in that centralized location instead of spawning their own. Um, so if you don't do this when running an RDP server, uh, Win 911 won't be able to reliably connect to InTouch because again, we have to be looking at the right one and it has to be in the same session ID. Um, and the window viewer instance names, those change every time they're launched from a different client. So we have a lot more information uh, about this specifically in our knowledge base. If you go to our website and go to the knowledge base, um, you can find out some good information. We also have this link here that you can see in blue uh, from InSource, and this talks about how to configure this master copy of InTouch um, with all of your other console sessions and everything else looking at the master copy. So occasionally we do see issues with SweetLink connectivity. Uh, now this is in your, your registry editor right here, RegEdit in the screenshot. Um, Win 911 will be put into a suspended state, and this is because some of the default settings for SweetLink don't have large enough buffers. So we have a regedit file that will make changes to the registry, uh, work in the majority of environments, but occasionally these settings will not work. Uh, it's dependent on your SweetLink activity. So if you find your Win 911 system is continuously uh, being suspended, even after making these changes, this definitely needs to be something that you contact your Wonderware support team for. Uh, any registry change in regard to their product needs to be done by them anyway. Uh, we've just found some information about it and made uh, a KB for it. But contact them, uh, get that buffer overflow control and, and all the information for their registry changed. Um, and it may be worthwhile to change it even if you're not experiencing issues just for future proof and growth. Um, but we do have the file on a knowledge base, and again, we urge you to go straight to Wonderware if you need to uh, play around with the sweet link buffer overflow. So organizing alarms, uh, this is, you know, when you're creating alarms, or if you just need to go through and reorganize your alarms in your SCADA, it's recommended that you group similar alarms together, especially if you're going to be notifying different sets of operators or individuals, uh, depending on that alarm type. So Win number one subscribes to alarms based on different alarm properties. So we can do alarm name, uh, alarm group, and priority, for example. Uh, InTouch allows you to assign alarms to those groups. So uh, for example, if you had alarms and InTouch assigned to Group A, then you could easily create an alarm subscription in Win911 for Group A and send all of those alarms to the responsible people that should be getting it in your tactic, in your callout list. Right, so it's a really good way of organizing. Um, you know, then you could create another subscription alarm for the Group B alarms and direct those straight to a different set of operators. So it just ends up being a very easy way to set up your, uh, your escalation of your notifications being sent to operators. Um, if you don't have a way to group your alarms together, uh, you'll likely need to create alarm subscriptions filtered on alarm names. That can get pretty tedious, especially if you don't have some type of organization or structure for adding, uh, let's say, the word Win911 to all the alarms that you care to send to Win911, right? You can do this however you want. This is just our recommendation for uh, making it easier for troubleshooting, future-proofing, adding these group alarms. So you can see here we have uh, inside Win911 workspace. This is inside the InTouch uh, application and its settings. We're uh, making the connection, and then this is the subscription filter. And you can see we're just specifying group A for the group. 
and then we would send that group A subscription to the group A strategy, group B to the group B strategy, so on and so forth, and that would uh, call out to the right people. So for the watchdog part of uh, Wind on One and talking to InTouch, you can monitor that connection. Basically what this is talking about is that you want to go ahead and work by monitoring a tag for a changing alarm state, which means you need to create an alarm in InTouch, uh, it changes its state automatically, right? So you would create that on your InTouch alarms, and um, we would be monitoring for that value change. And when it doesn't change within the specified timeout, you can see here an example of 90 seconds. If we were not to see that change, then uh, it would blast out that watchdog alarm. Um, you'd also want to filter your alarm summary to exclude this alarm probably so it doesn't clutter your summary. Or set it, send it to a strategy maybe that uh, you just customly set up a strategy just for the watchdog or heartbeat. And that would just notify specific people or even a do not notify strategy if it's becoming something that happens more often than it should. Uh, whatever you want to do to be the admin on that. Um, that brings us into the heartbeat as well. So you can write a heartbeat to an in-touch tag, which indicates that connection status, right? So we're just talking to SweetLink. SweetLink is talking to in-touch and writing a value to a tag that you have created. So this is going to basically indicate its operational status, right? This is its vital sign, quote unquote, heartbeat. Uh, the heartbeat writes an incrementing value from zero to nine. So zero, one, two, three, four, all the way through nine on an integer tag. And once the heartbeat reaches nine, rolls back to zero and just keeps repeating that over and over and over forever. Um, and if the tag fails to update, right, it doesn't get that right value for it to update, you can assume that Win911 has probably lost the connection into InTouch uh, and is no longer able to send those updates or possibly even not even receive alarm information. It can raise that flag for you. So now remember the Win911 in touch data source that utilizes a combination of both the Wonderware alarm toolkit, right? That's that's one path for getting alarms from in touch, and the sweet link to integrate with in touch applications, sending information back. So there's two uh, two kind of highways of, of data here. One is getting the alarm straight from the alarm toolkit, and one is a sending the ACK, sending the watchdog or heartbeat update uh, into sweet link. And SweetLink is then writing that to InTouch. So that heartbeat write to an InTouch tag is from SweetLink, that's the inbound into your InTouch. And the alarm toolkit going outbound, that means that a successful heartbeat indicates a healthy SweetLink connection, but not necessarily a healthy alarm connection coming outbound into Win Number One. So as a result, we've also added that heartbeat suspension option, which will suspend the heartbeat if the alarm activity is not detected on a defined tag. Uh, we have a lot more information on this, a how-to video and documentation uh, on our website in the knowledge base if you really want to dig into this. Um, you can also just press the question mark for the help button inside your workspace on this page. It'll pull it up right there. Uh, the main thing to know is that there's two avenues of communication happening. Alarms coming out of InTouch straight to Win911. And then inbound, we're talking to SweetLink. SweetLink is talking to InTouch. Uh, so last year, we released the Contacts Utility, which allows operators to make changes to the callout list and their schedules uh, without needing to access the full Win911 configuration in the workspace. So this came as you know, high demand. A lot of people wanted this, and they didn't want to have to train people or even give access to people to come in, open up the workspace and change the information and the tactic, the callout list, the schedules there. Um, so this, you can just create a button on your InTouch side. It launches the utility. It's just a, a light separate executable that uh, pulls up the screen. You can see here an example that you can change the tactic. You can change the callout order. You can change the scheduling. And that's, that's all it's going to give you permissions into. You're not going to see the rest of the workspace information. Uh, so your operator never needs to leave the HMI and uh, they can also not do any extra changes that might cause an issue with the rest of Win911. Okay, so um, just to give you some resources here, the install checklist for all SCADAs, including this, especially InTouch, is included on our website. If you just go to resources and documentation, 
Uh, there's the install checklists listed right there, and you can click on the InTouch one. It will give you all of the information we covered here, uh, plus much, much more from installation to SQL to configuring to connecting to InTouch to notifier types. Everything you need is going to be in that install checklist. Uh, we also have, again, I'll reiterate the knowledge base articles. We have the how-to videos and previous webinars that we've done all linked from that same documentation page. Some upcoming webinars, we have May 6th, the GE iFix best practices. May 13th, we're going to do system platform. And the next one, I believe, after that is going to be an in-depth troubleshooting guide. And that is also all going to be listed on our website. Some great things that we are working on right now as of April 2020. Uh, we are working on the new desktop UI, replacing Silverlight with a WPF desktop application. So getting away from the um, Internet Explorer, from Silverlight, getting away from IIS, uh, and decreased resource usage, all that good stuff. We're also working on redundancy with automatic failover to the backup Win911, as well as syncing that configuration of your SQL databases to each other so you don't have to go make one change here and make one change there on your on your backup machine. Um, development is also working on OPC UA alarming conditions. Right now we only support OPC DA but this is in the works. Uh, one last note here if you have not already seen this this is our feature request page it's on our website. You can just click on Submit Feedback. I believe it's called at the top of our website. It's also in every single one of uh, my support team members' signatures for submitting a feature request. You can upvote some other ones that already exist. You can make your own and monitor what we have votes for, uh, which is going to lead to the things that we work on here in development and uh, creating better products for you guys. All right, thank you guys for sticking around. Uh, we do these webinars every week now, and it's gotten some great feedback, so we appreciate it. Um, we also uh, offer the Certificate of Professional Development Hours. It's available where we can uh, give you that information from our sales team, sales at win91.com, and that can count towards uh, any other certificate or anything you're working on for those uh, professional development hours. Thank you.